sessions. Did you learn anything? Did you meet new people? Did you get, like, educated? Yeah. You did? Good, I'm glad to hear it. Well, prepare yourself for another dose of fun and edutainment. I'm gonna welcome up one of my colleagues, the inestimably intelligent Mark Sullivan. He is our uh, lead dude in terms of health tech coverage at VentureBeat. How you doing, Mark? Good. Having fun yet? So much fun. Okay. Well, he's going to be talking with Adam Ferogi, CEO and co-founder of App Levin, and Mike Bigoli, VP of Product at Living Social. Give the gentleman a hand. Come on up, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Great to be here with you guys. Great to be here. Great to be here. Be fine. So, um, just to get right to it. Um, everybody knows that mobile traffic has just exploded. It's, it's the new world. The mobile device is the center of the universe now. Um, but it, it hasn't always been, or it, it isn't now, that um, engagement to the point of, of purchase in apps and on the mobile device has kept up with that engagement. Um, why is that important, and why is it so important that companies bring those two things into parity? Well, so we work with a lot of brands, and we see a lot of the data points. And really, what we, the main stat that we see is that over 50% of consumer consumption is today coming from mobile devices. These phones that we have on us at all times, the tablet that we carry around everywhere, these devices are the most intimate devices that we as human beings have seen in our lifetimes. So consumers are there. They're there all the time. And the brands that can take advantage of it by focusing on the right user experiences will benefit greatly over the coming years and decades. Those that don't will really fall behind and lose a lot of their business. And you know, when, when in my business, I'm head of product and I'm also part of a lot of sales meetings and we work with a lot of brands. And there's, it's almost a binary output. We see some brands that have invested in mobile and are already reaping the benefits. And then we see a lot of other brands that aren't. And you know, a lot of you might wonder, in Silicon Valley, why would a brand not focus on mobile today? Mobile's huge, we all know that, but a lot of brands don't because they look at the stats for their own business and they see 50% of traffic is coming from mobile and only 15% of our revenue is coming from mobile. And they'll tell us, look, we launched a mobile app a couple years ago and we got a few downloads and there's just not enough revenue in that mobile app to justify hiring up developers for it. And they can't even find the engineering talent that's mobile-centric in a lot of the regions of the US. So I'm excited about sitting on the stage today with Mike, who's run product at Living Social the last few years, because he's had to look at a lot of these questions, and he's had to come up with solutions for them at Living Social, and now they're doing really well on mobile. So turn it over. Thank you. So in our case, we started as a desktop and, and heavily email business, as you guys all know. But we sort of got pulled into more and more adopting mobile. And, and part of it was like when you, to the extent that I want to actually say that if we were to redo things, if we had our own way, if we were to set, hit a reset button and go back and rebuild everything, we would actually build a mobile first company today. So we would have actually started with the app, started with a mobile website. We would have sort of ignored the desktop experience. But, but we obviously have some legacy and we have, we're in sort of a transition mode. But, and there are a number of reasons for why I say that. When you, when you look at the sort of the macro space, you look at last year, there were about a billion smartphones shipped, 300 million laptops. So you just look at that discrepancy right there and the rate of growth for those two, and you, it's, your numbers are there, your answers are there in terms of like where your audience are going to be. And, and then so you look at internally, you look at your own sort of usage. In our specific case, 55% of our traffic is, is mobile today. And that doesn't include the 8% tablet, which I don't consider it mobile because you can't really put it in your pocket and walk down the street. So it it's more belongs to the laptop camp. But so you, so you look at that and you're like, well, we're already essentially a mobile first company, even though we are, we are still have some homework to do to really embrace it. Then you really look at these audience and you, you say, well, what are the characteristics of some of these folks? Like, what is that? So how does this map to revenue? Is this, is this really helpful for us? And one stat that specifically in our, in our companies is a little bit both powerful as well as controversial is uh, that of the audience that have downloaded our mobile app and are using it, their lifetime value, which is a stat that most retailers here care about a lot or anyone in the commerce business, they're 50% more valuable. 
And when you look at a number like that, and in the businesses that 5% that is very meaningful, something like 50% is a huge number. Now, it's a little hard to take this as, as, as sort of gospel because it, there, there's a little bit of causality there. Of Did these people become more valuable after they downloaded the app or they were more valuable before they downloaded the app? But so that's, that's sort of like reason two. The, the, the third area for us, when you look at it from, a, from a, my product hat and just looking at what can you do with the product, there's a lot of stuff we could do today with mobile that we couldn't do with laptop or desktop like a couple years ago, or three or four years ago. So you know, let's take one specific uh, business case for us. So we have customers that uh, buy a voucher, and they have to go and redeem it. So the, those people that redeem their vouchers, we call them redeemers. And people will buy a voucher, buy a deal, and don't redeem it, we call them non-redeemers. It ends up being a very, very interesting shift in, in, in our segment for these two users. The folks that actually redeem their voucher, their net promoter score, and, and I'm sure most people here know what net promoter score is, but it's a, it's a loyalty score of how, how likely your customers are to promote your business. Their net promoter score is on par with Apple iPad. It's on par with Southwest Airlines. It's around what Amazon is. So it's a phenomenally good net promoter score. And the folks who don't redeem, it's an awful net promoter score. And when you look at this problem and how you would solve it from technology and product perspective, you really reach at the point that, well, mobile is a much better solution to solve it. We actually see the numbers, too. And the reason for that is this device is always with you. It's always on. It knows where you are. You can send it a push note if. So it's a lot easier to get people to redeem on this device, like by geofencing them, by having it at all time ready with them, by sending a push note if to them, than a paper voucher that people have to print and carry. And it has such a material impact on our business when you look at consumer behavior. And I think sort of the last point I'll, I'll, I'll leave is like in terms of our own use cases, like one of the things we notice is, and probably everyone here needs to think about is how much your business is truly a mobile first business versus you know, just naturally it's getting pulled in that direction. Our merchant business is a truly mobile first business, right? Our merchants are in front of the counter, talking to customers on the go. So for them, we should have never really built a desktop experience to begin with. We are now in that position. We built it. We have to support it. Like we're not, we can't pull the plug on it. But even without really promoting a mobile app, already more than half of our customers use a mobile experience, and around 20% of them are solely using that. And this is not us trying to actually incite that behavior yet. This is just organically happening over the last year or so. Good. Well, I think that paints the picture really well. Um, what I'd like to get from you guys is uh, I'd like to get at sort of the more strategic level and talk a little bit about what some of the best thinking out there is for um, driving purchases on, on mobile platforms. And not only you know, what maybe others are doing, but uh, what, what you folks are, are doing today. Adam, why don't you talk first? Yeah, so you know, we're, we're a marketing company. And we work with varying levels of companies uh, in, in terms of the competency that they have in mobile today. And the most competent are driving, if they were digital first and desktop first, now driving 50% of their transactional volumes through mobile. Um, you know, the really good numbers are 40% and up. And then you don't find too much in the middle. Then you find a whole bunch of other businesses that are around 15 to 20%. So I always look at it like, what are these companies doing that are excelling? It's not that us humans don't buy on our phones. Clearly, if a couple companies are doing it really well, or many companies are doing it really well, we do buy on our devices, our mobile devices. So what's different about these companies? They've invested heavily in mobile. They've really lined up their engineering resources and their engineering team, and they've said, look, these devices are different than what we've built for before. We have to build new experiences. We have to build a native app that utilizes a lot of the power of this mobile device. Push notifications is something Mike touched on. Location is another thing. Um, there, there's so much you can do in this mobile device if you focus on it, and they've focused on it. Beyond that, they, porting your desktop site to mobile is never a good answer. We hear that all the time. We took our desktop site, and we optimized it a little bit for mobile, and we're not seeing the transactional volume we'd expect. Well, that's because these screens are pretty small, and the best experiences are very visual. That requires a full site redesign, which requires engineering focus. And then where we come in is we work with a lot of these brands to then help them market once they have the effective user experiences. So we work with them to help them find new customers. In particular, it's very hard for brands to promote themselves and drive application installs. If you look at most of the advertising today done on mobile, 
You see games. I mean, they're out there everywhere. Yeah. Everyone wants to play that candy game or wants to join a clan. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for the commerce and travel brands of the world to stand out. It, the, these gaming companies are buying up all the inventory because we human beings really love the power of these devices and they were really built to be powerful gaming devices and more and more consumers are becoming gamers. But that said, we all buy. I mean, we're all buying on Hotels.com or purchasing deals through Living Social and Groupon or buying from Nordstrom, et cetera. So why can't the commerce and travel brands and in other transactional businesses promote themselves effectively? So we've built technologies to help them with that, to find new customers. And then we've really focused on working with these brands to help them re-engage their already existing customer base and to help them drive more transactions through their, their properties. And so I'll turn it over to, to Mike to talk about more specifically what Living Social has done here. So, so in our world, there, there's, there's two sides of it. There's like, what do we specifically have done on the product perspective and what the numbers are and what do we have to do to actually get there? So the first order of business was like three years ago, there was one iOS engineer, there's one mobile engineer, period, in the company. And this one person, brilliant engineer, we pretty much everything we shipped on desktop, 50 plus engineers would come to him and say, hey, can you ship it here? And he would but clearly like a large sort of departure from where we, are, where we are today. So first order was like, how do you change product development from a, from a point of view that like everyone's just shipping in desktop to feature teams that are working on mobile and desktop and thinking about the end-to-end -end scenario? And that's actually not a trivial thing. It's, it's a hard thing in product development to think about all the scenarios, all the devices, and it's just gotten harder. So that was one. And today, we, we, the way we, we've sort of the sweet spot we arrived at, and actually we're still learning. This is, this is probably, there are probably better answers out there. But the, the sweet spot we arrived at is like, let's think about mobile web first. It still has the same screen size limitation. You still have to have some of the discipline. And the engineers and the designers and everyone thinks about that set. It ships it from desktop and mobile web. You can actually get the experiment data on the site pretty quickly. And then you can ship the native. And that, that's sort of where we arrived at. There's, there's probably room for growth there. The, uh, the actual number side, and like what are the, some of the, the, the issues, as you, as you asked us, we, well, for one, like the number I mentioned for, for mobile traffic, which is around 55% of our traffic, well, they end up, it doesn't end up being 55% of our revenue. It actually ends up being around 40%, close to 40% of our revenue comes from that. And th there's obviously a gap there, right? So the question is, like, why is there a gap there? Like, why do we specifically have a gap there? Like, is that normal? So we are still above of what you know, everybody else tells us they are. So we feel good about that. But, but specifically, like, how can we improve this is, is a question in our mind. And one, one area that we think if we, we could go back, and, and probably people in this room can, can fix that, if we could go back, one of the things that we notice is a lot of people in the morning open up their phone. They get a push. They get an email from us. They, they open up the phone, they, they go to the page, but they don't buy it. And one of the things when you look at the analytics, you realize is people don't want to put in their username and password. And A, like just typing on the phone is harder, and B, a lot of people just forget it, like forget what the password they set with us. Like we're one of the many sites that they have a password with. So, you know, and we very meticulously made people log in on the desktop and collect their password, but we perhaps maybe we should have pushed Facebook Connect harder, right? Because Facebook, most people are logged into it already. And most people, at least, they remember the password. So if they had an easier Facebook login on a mobile phone with us, like maybe we could have just passed this hump. So we're, 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 we're learning some of the data there, and we're making a bigger, bigger push there. And I think sort of, I'll, I'll stop there in the interest of time, but there, there's a number of mobile, mobile bet, mobile first investments that if we were to rethink this, we would have done. OK, great. Thanks, Mike. Um, so uh, the third thing is, if we could get into some specifics about how your two companies are are working together right now, as you know, as a you know, you're trying to help a, a, an app developer uh, optimize performance and optimize uh, engagement and purchases on the app. And so, where's the starting point, and what what is sort of the substance of that relationship, Adam? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with that. So um, we started working together with Living Social about a year ago. And it really, we focus this relationship on our mobile retargeting product because they have an audience already. Um, and they're still focused on growing that audience, but they already have a bunch of consumers buying deals. So really, what we wanted to figure out was, with an innovative marketing technology, could they increase the likelihood that their already existing consumer base would purchase more through their mobile properties? So let me walk you through the example of what we do together. So they hooked up with us um, on their mobile application and site and pass us user device clickstream information 
through an API to our systems. What does that mean? We basically, without sharing, cross-sharing any PII, we, we get a sense of the deals that consumer devices are looking at and purchasing. And that's really powerful stuff, because what we can do with that is we put that into a recommendation engine and we figure out what deals every single consumer device should be interested in next. Given deals are a time-based thing, and consumers aren't checking these types of applications every single day, by knowing what deal is gonna be interesting to that consumer device today, the next day, the next day after that, we could then plug those recommendations into our ad serving technology, go out across 15 billion ad requests a day, and locate these consumer devices that were already living socials users. We find, on average, in 24 hours, over 50% of a brand's audience. So then, on a regular basis, we could take that living social app and website experience and essentially push it out to the consumer world through our advertising reach. And every single one of these ads is customly tailored for each individual consumer based on their browsing history. And every one of these ads looks and feels like the living social application experience. So the consumer sees an ad for a deal that's relevant to them. They go and click. Where do they go? They deep link right back into Mike's app right on the point of purchase. And it's really easy for a consumer to then say, OK, $15, $20, I get a massage, click to buy, I'm done. In a lot of cases, because Living Social's business is local too, these deals are right down the street from these customers. So they get a great deal that's relevant for them that they otherwise wouldn't have known about. And the whole process is seamless. And we're seeing real results. So with every one of these campaigns, what we want to measure is that we want to know what the organic conversion rate of a customer audience is going to be on a brand's application or a mobile website. And then we want to show that the users that engage with these advertisements are generating incremental transactions. And what we found is the users who engage are generating more than 100% more conversions for Living Social's products than users who didn't see these advertisements. That's a big number and it's meaningful. And so really brands that utilize innovative marketing technologies, whether it's part of our technology or a lot of the other companies that are focused on improving marketing on mobile today, those brands are gonna put themselves in a position for success over time. And they're really gonna be front runners in this mobile movement. And in a couple years from now, those brands are gonna be relevant. And the brands that don't really focus on marketing on mobile today and spend all their money on desktop as all consumer consumption shifts to mobile are gonna be left behind. And I'll pass it over to Mike to add on. So, so I mean, I'll, I'll be brief in the interest of time, but from, from our perspective, obviously, we, we have two problems. Get more new users and get, get re-engagement for these users, right? So our philosophy with, for, for both pockets, and you know, particularly in the first pocket, has been build the internal tools that you could actually accurately measure what, what your net revenue per user is, what their lifetime value is, and build tools that you can partner with folks like AppLovin and empower them. So, for example, in, in the case with AppLovin, we would like them to understand and to know and have the data of what a user that they pass to us does on our app so that they can, in turn, buy us better users and more users like them. So those are the sort of things that we focus on building internally. And on the re-engagement side is also the same thing, right? You, people are coming in using a product, and we, we would want to bring them back, whether if it's that specific product or something from that category. And retargeting, for most people, if, if you're not doing it, it works really well. I mean, it's, you have to test it. You have to figure out your attribution window. But retargeting is a massively successful product. In some areas, like ours in mobile, it also becomes a little bit more strategic because we are realizing that there are a lot of sessions in mobile that people don't end up buying, buying in. And that's, that, that's the discrepancy that I was, I was talking about. So if we can somehow figure out, and we, we've had some success, if we can somehow figure out, retarget these people, bring them back a second time around, maybe this time with a promo code, like a mobile-only promo code, right? And we've seen early signs of this, then that's a success for us. And I'm getting that over time, so I'll wrap up. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, that's fantastic. That's a great look at uh, how you folks are working together on mobile retargeting and engagement and relevance. And uh, thank you very much for, for the insights. I, I think we could talk about the retargeting part for another hour, probably. But I've uh, uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, please give these guys a big hand for their Thanks, Thanks. Well done. <laughs>